Hey folks, Gabriella Huffman here with Southport Real Estate Academy. As you know, we've got some updates to our forms rolling out in just a couple of days. So I wanted to go over a few changes that I've noticed on the standard 2T sales contract that um, may be interesting uh, when you run into it in practice. First one is the earnest money and the due diligence fee section. Notice that the due diligence fee now has a place where you can check method of payment, how that due diligence fee will be turned in. Also notice that the earnest money, there are still two opportunities to turn that in, but notice that the first opportunity will be by the effective date of the sales contract, just like the due diligence fees, the effective date, so is the earnest money. No longer with this offer is an option. Or the earnest money can be turned in within five days of the effective date. So don't forget to check the appropriate boxes should your buyer decide to put down any deposit. Next, look at this section here. Please make sure you go read this and highlight this because this is very interesting. So if your buyer agrees to put down due diligence fee and never turns it in and then decides to terminate during the due diligence period, that buyer will now be in breach for failure to turn in the agreed upon due diligence fee. Yes, that is a major, major change to our due diligence period. So again, that due diligence period was our uh, right to terminate for any reason or no reason. But now if the buyer does not turn in that DDF as agreed upon and then buyer decides to terminate during the due diligence fee, that is a breach. So the seller is entitled to not only the due diligence fee, which they can come after, but any earnest money deposit. Yes, that has changed as well. So you need to be careful on how you talk about DDF and EMD with your buyers because it, it is having a significant change on how that is handled during that due diligence period. And so again, G as in girl, later in the sales contract, buyer's right to terminate. Notice it says provided that buyer has delivered any agreed upon due diligence fee. Please go back and read all of that and have a good discussion with your firm on how that's going to be presented. Another major change is where you're checking off how the buyer intends to purchase the property. It's, a, it's more of an extended section now um, with a lot more check boxes. So um, same information is being gathered, but just in different places. So make sure you take a look at that. Um, before you start writing a new offer. Assessment. So they took this away altogether. Apparently, we were not using it correctly. Uh, it still stands that the buyer will pay for any um, proposed assessments to occur after the recording of the deed has happened in the future. And the seller will still be responsible for any confirmed assessments. That actual language will be under the buyer's responsibility section of the sales contract and the seller's responsibility uh, in the sales contract. So this section here, identifying whom's responsible, is completely omitted, but it does specify in each party section who holds the responsibility depending on the type of assessment. All right, another major change, y'all. Delay in settlement. It used to be 14 days. So if you missed the settlement date, which is fine because it's not followed by time being of the essence, it was a 14-day grace period. But now they've changed it to seven. So keep that in mind when you're trying to schedule those settlement dates and stay really close attention to your transactions because now it's seven. As you do know, there is an amendment to contract if you need some more time, but this is another major change here. All right, folks, that's all that I wanted to talk about. I'll be picking through the other forms and do some more videos. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for everything. Have a great day.